barbershop conversations, barbershop conversations, man. Going again. So, so I walk into the gym and I see my college teammate, man. What's and uh, man, <laughs> we used to be basketball players. Now we fucking. Now you like a fucking bodybuilder, like he man this motherfucker, man. <laughs> and uh, sure yeah, we he went is. to Woody College together. And uh, big boxing fan. And yes, uh, big boxing fan, and uh, believe it or not, I didn't know you fuck with me on YouTube, and we've been friends for damn near twenty years now, right? Yes, friends sir. for twenty yes, years, easy, easy, easy. And you got a YouTube channel; it's called The Venue, yes, and sir. you just got it started. And, and talk about it real quick. Well, uh, I'm gonna put the link in the description box so sure. everyone get to subscribe. For sure. Um, well, you know, you actually inspired me to do the venue. I mean, people been telling me for years to get on uh -huh. this uh, YouTube channel stuff, and, and um, you know, I just wasn't. I wasn't too uh, quick to, to get on. I was hesitant because um, I wasn't sure that, you know, um, I, I would, I didn't know what kind of con content mm -hmm. I wanted to provide. I didn't know if I had to, I didn't know if I had what it took to put the time and energy into it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I mean, honestly, but, um, you know, I kept seeing your stuff come up and I was like, man, Fred is doing his thing, man. Uh -huh. and, I, and your style is, Probably one of the, the dopest styles out Thank there, you. man. Your your your, your, your uh, channel is is to me one of the top uh, one of the top boxing uh, sport sport mm -hmm. uh, channels. You know what I'm saying? The way you cover cover everyone and stuff like that. So I was just like, you know, I asked you what was going on with your channel. You told me what was up, and you make. You you told you showed me that I was making it to be more than what it is, man. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I was right. like, you know what? Hey, man, I got the I got things I want to talk about. I got hey, your personality is fucking. Appreciate once that, they man. get hip, once they get hip to your personality, man. Yeah. yeah. Once I get to you're definitely get one of a kind. Farley's Farley, my nigga is one of a kind for real. That's my nigga in real life, like for real. Appreciate that. Bro. And uh, the first thing you want to talk about was. Josie Mosset, the gay Tupac. Oh yeah, the, uh, oh yeah, oh oh yeah, Smallette, Jesse Smollett. Yeah, what, yeah. What was the gay Tupac stuff? I mean, see, this is the thing, man. Uh -huh. I knew. From oh, people the, don't know you're an actor as well. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, you've been in a whole bunch of shit. Um, yeah. One of the most recent projects I was in was um, um, yeah, well, I can't think of it right now, man. I'm on the spot now, man. Okay. <laughs> um, you had a reoccurring role. Rosewood, 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 yeah. On, uh -huh. on TV. Um, um, what was that? Uh, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. I've been doing a lot of stuff. Uh -huh. I've been doing this for about as long as I've known you. Yeah, because you know your first saying? spot, I believe, was in college. You got the 50 Cent video or something. Remember? Yeah, we yeah, was like, yeah, oh, yeah, we was yeah, running yeah. around campus niggas in the 50 Cent video. Remember that shit? Yeah. In the club. I'm yeah, full of dumb. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Video, I remember that man. shit. We was like, Farley. We got Farley. I had the, the, the braids and everything. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing my street He was on your B2K shit. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> straight oh, up, straight man. up. Small but, world. Um, you know, um, so I've been doing that for years, and, and you know, actually, and, and still doing it, still uh -huh. doing it. But this only makes sense. Now, now this is just a small thing. Um, it's funny because on on the TV show, uh -huh. you know, I, I, I watched Empire maybe the first I was, and I, you know, I, I fought through it. There was some good, there was some cool stuff happening on there, um, and I actually thought he was one of the most strongest actors on there. You know, level of vulnerability. He had he had a wide range of level of vulnerability, and even though his character was probably one of the darkest characters, it was also one of the most level-headed characters on there. So it seems like th this this to see what's going on in his actual life is actually such a contrast, a heavy contrast. Um, and I didn't think he needed to, you know, when this happened, when I first heard about it um, initially, you know, the initial thing was, oh, that's kind of messed up. But then once I heard the story, I was like, ah, that don't sound right. That sounds somebody lying up in here, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it didn't take long for them to unravel this thing, and and you know, I didn't feel like he needed to go that route. You know what I'm saying? He, like I, he had pretty, he had strong acting chops. You know, was really re really interesting to watch. You know what I'm saying? Um, and uh, I felt like he wouldn't have had no problem in this game. You know, getting more work. But when I hear what the actual reason was behind it, that he did, he wasn't happy with what he was getting paid I'm like come on bro you know what I'm saying you making the type of living that most people would dream of you know what I'm saying and you know I put it I, I say that's just a lack of appreciation and understanding what what you actually have and then to put people 
put a people through something that that you know they get people riled up about stuff like racial issues and, and gender issues, gen, gender um, sexuality, sexuality issues. You know what I'm saying? Things that really happen and go on and victimization and stuff. To to use that to kind of, to do to do yourself a service to you know what I'm saying? Try to get yourself a higher paycheck. That was it was it was fucked up. You know what I'm saying? So you know I'm you know. I mean, he still hasn't come out and flat out admitted it yet, uh, but it's only a matter of time till that other shoe drop. And you know, uh, he he deserves to get justice for this. You know what I'm saying? He deserves to get whatever come to him. You know what I'm saying? Um, hopefully, uh, but I also do believe in the redemption of man too. Mm -hmm. So you know, once once a person actually is accountable for good for point, the, you know Great what I'm point. saying? Accountability first, man. Come on out and just. Just fess up, man. That's if, if, that, if that was the thing, you know, if everything is pointing to that this was staged. Mm -hmm. But we haven't gotten the, the, the full scope yet. Mm -hmm. But if that's what the case is, which it's looking like, man, he needs to be accountable and and go ahead and pay his dues and move on. You know what I'm saying? Uh, speaking of culture, it's an easy segue to talk about, mm -hmm. you know, the, I don't know, the male Me Too movement, if you want to call it, the Josie Mosset to... Uh, Foy Mayweather, yeah. you know, Foy Mayweather. What's your take on that? Uh, you know, I think um, Floyd does a lot of stuff for, he does a lot of stuff for attention. You know, um, you know, you can't take away what he's actually contributed to the sport of boxing. You know what I'm saying? Um, he, he's a smart businessman and an amazing athlete. He's inspired a lot of people, made an impact on a lot of people's careers in the boxing world. Outside of that, selfish dude. You know what I'm saying? Just calling it how I see it. He's very selfish and narcissistic. And he has very uh, little insecurity. You know what I'm saying? I mean, when you when you, when you you make that such a, when you, when you, number one, come to a point in your life where you've had the success he has. You as a person have to realize that you didn't get there alone. You didn't get there alone. All the people that pay into your pay-per-view events, all the people that continue to support you, you know what I'm saying? You know, because they they like what you do. You have a responsibility. You have a responsibility to be a champion for the people and not just yourself. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that's not going to shade at nobody. That's just being real. You have a responsibility to the people that put you on that platform. You know, yes, you were in the ring. You were doing the work. But if nobody came out to show, to, sh to, to pay that money, to see your events, it, you wouldn't be where you're at. Period. So I just feel like in that case, uh, you know, I, I don't feel, I don't, I feel his character in that situation, just in general, I'm, I'm not a fan of his character. I'm a fan of his work, not of his character. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, everybody has the ability to to change. Everybody has the ability to see, man, you know what? I have character flaws, and you know what I'm saying? I've done some I've done some messed up things, and you know, they have the ability to change. And when, he, when and if he comes to that point in the road, hey, you know, I'm all about, again, redemptiveness, you know what I'm saying? But until then, I mean, I can't support somebody like that. I can't support somebody who's that selfish in, and um, just has a lack of care of the issues that concern the people in his community. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, as far as the Gucci shit, I don't know. I never cared about no designer stuff. You know, I, everything I got on from Ross, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, um, um, but I think as a community, we need to stop wanting to, wanting, we need, we need, we need to take stuff like that, that, that with Floyd Mayweather and Gucci and all this other stuff. Man, stop, stop worshiping these people, man. Stop looking for validity through, from these people. As an individual and as a community, we need to start seeing work in ourselves. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, and, and only then is when we can, as a community, build. 
and make and, and take what we've been giving them, take what we've been giving them from our own culture, because Gucci and Prada and all these other things, they blow up off of our culture. I mean, they blow up off of the swag that we bring to them. The you know from from our music to our entertainment just to who we are as individuals. They take that and they blow their brands up and then they, they and then they, they kill us on the market. You know what I'm saying? And then turn around and slap us in the face all the time. But that's our fault for continuing to turn back to them and accept them. We want so much to be val validated through these people. And I think that, like I said, the moment that we decide, mm -mm, no more, we'll do our own thing. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's when things are changed. Until then, we kind of deserve it. <laughs> yeah, great point. Great point. I mean, yeah, you, you're as eloquent as a, as a, as eloquent can be. You know what I mean? As it relates to that subject. Real talk. And we we're walking over here. Let's talk, last subject. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you was talking about Earl Spence and Mikey Garcia. Yeah, uh, oh well. Well, you, no, you, well, you well, okay. We'll, we'll talk, oh, you we'll, want to talk about Terrence Crawford? Yeah, Earl Spence. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about Terrence Crawford, Earl Spence. Well, well, Earl, Earl Spence. Well, we'll, we'll touch on Mikey Garcia. Okay. Okay. I mean. I feel like people are building that up to be more than what it is. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? But that's great. Two two fighters get to get in the ring and get a payday for them. Awesome. You know, I ain't getting paid off that. Ain't nobody getting paid off that but them. That's great. That's not really the fight that anybody wants to truly see. Mm -hmm. We're just settling because, you know, people are, you know, they like Errol Spence. And they, there's people that like Mikey Garcia. So they're going to, you know, they'll, they'll support him. What I want to see, what the people want to see, it's Terrence Crawford versus Errol Smith. And I I was talking to you about it, and you know, we both have our strong opinions on certain things mm -hmm. and ain't, ain't afraid to uh, voice them, you know what I'm saying? But, cause that, hey, don't, what the next man eat don't feed my belly, so mm -hmm. if I feel like saying so, I'ma say it. So, I like both of them as fighters. They, they're both dope fighters. They both are. But Kings in their own but, life. Go ahead, go. But, <laughs> okay, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you ain't got to yell at me for that. Um, Terrence Crawford has made it very clear he wants to smoke with Errol Spence. He wants to smoke. He, he, it's not just with Errol Spence. He wants anybody that got a title, he's coming for it. And Errol Spence just happens to be one of the first people that stand in the way of that. I enjoy that. I like that. Conflict, you know what I'm saying? I like the confrontation. On the other hand, Errol Spence is, you know, he's not making it very clear he wants this the, the smoke. You know what I'm saying? He's not like, in my opinion, if I was Errol Spence, I'd look at it as, so this cat wanna come from 140 to 147 and challenge me for my belt. He wanna take my bread from me. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm selling them tickets. I'm get, that, I think that'll be a big money fight. Huge, huge. I think, like, like I said, I'm not saying I ain't saying that Errol Spence is afraid to fight him, but I'm saying that he ain't too, he ain't been too, he ain't been too open about does he want that fight? You know what I'm saying? He ain't just come out and say, hey man, you want to smoke? I want to smoke. Let's get it. You know what I'm saying? I like when fighters are, are, are. I had to let my subscribers see the little work. Huh? I was about to subscribe and see the little work. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, that that's kind of where I'm at. I, you know, I'm, my, my question was and is uh, just, you know, d it, does Errol Spence really want that fight? Is that, it? D or does he really feel that arrogant as far as that, you know, he can look past Ter Terrence Crawford? Because Terrence Crawford is not a walkthrough. One, from 140 to 147 is not that big a jump in weight, bro. You know what I'm saying? Especially the longer that he waits for it, because Ter Terrence Crawford is going to put on that those those pounds naturally. Number one, and number two, these guys they 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 spar with people all the time that are in two three weight classes every year. Today. So I, people th people people that say, well, you know, he's, I think he's a little too small. People are full of shit. They don't understand the what what really goes on. See. The outside world, when they're looking at boxing, it's boxing to them. Mm. The people in the game call it the fight game. And me and you, cats like us know, just from our upbringing, there ain't no weight classes when a fight go down. 
<laughs> You're right. <laughs> you understand what I'm You're saying? Right. When it go down out here, you gotta handle your business, or you gonna, or you gonna get picked apart. Uh huh. So, all the difference is that these people are number one, taking it to a professional level by conditioning themselves that they can give an ex a spectacular fight and go the rounds they need to go. They've taken it to a skill set to where it, it's an art, okay? And that they can get paid for it. But it's still a fight. <laughs> so, like I said, man, 140 to 147, yo, that's gas. Don't let nobody gas you on, well, uh, you know, he's a little too light to go. Look, when Evander Holyfield, when he first made his heavyweight debut, what people don't know is that he was not he he was underweight he was underweight to fight in the head for his first heavyweight championship. But he even he there's a there's an interview, I can't remember where it is, but if you look it up you'll find it. He says he he put he added some weight to his to his underwear like so that he could make the weight. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That People in the boxing game historically have moved up in weight class, down in weight class. And actually, weight classes were much broader. Exactly. Oh, they, they added the, those exactly. the, those middleweights. Yeah, they used to be like 15 pounds apart and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, when you're looking like this, mm -hmm. like this, when, when the Sugar Rays and met Marvin Hagler's and and um 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 even Joe Lewis, go back yeah. a little further. Yeah, dude, them dudes was them and those were scraps, bro. Like those was some, they was throwing heavy levels. Like, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't nothing cute about them fights. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So, like I said, it, and the thing is, even though the times has changed, the essence behind fighting has not changed. It's people's views, or it's the way the media kind of paints that shit. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, it's for their, whatever, whatever narrative they want to paint. You know what I'm saying? But the reality is, fighting has never changed. Combat has never changed. In reality, there is no, there's never been a weight class. Mm -hmm. Like if you get into it with somebody, I get it, I get it go it. down. You know what I'm saying? And and you see all the time where smaller fighters get in the ass of bigger. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So it's not about the, it's not about the uh, size of the dog in the fight. It's about the what the fight in the in the dog, size of the fight in the dog. Straight so who up. wins? Earl who? Spence, Terence Crawford. Now, that is that that one. I can't really. I, that that's something that I can't really easily say. That's that's because they both in their own right. So is it okay? Okay, okay. So so, so since you can't ask that question now, mm -hmm. is it Earl Spence Hart or is it money grabs, which is impeding him from really wanting the Terrence Crawford fight? Um, you mean as far as uh? Yeah, you said he's not really really aggressively pursuing Terrence Crawford. Right. Do you think, right. Do you think there's a tone of fear? There's a level of fear? Well, here's or the there is like, I'm just going to go get these money grabs with this Mikey Garcia. Said, he's been said to Terrence Crawford, you know, go ahead, you get get a get a belt in this division so we can unify the titles. He told him, like, you know, fight Jeff Horn, get that bike, get that, get that belt, and then we can and then and then we can do this. Mm -hmm. He been far, he been knocked the crap out of Jeff Horn. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. easy. Okay. Spanky. It was easy. It was easy. So from again. I don't hear no talk from Errol Spence about, you know, okay, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? I don't hear that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But then again, he, he's a guy that kind of plays middle of the road. Errol Spence. Yeah. He mm -hmm. plays middle of the road. Terrence plays middle of the road too, but he ain't afraid to say, I'll fight anybody. Matter of fact, I want you. <laughs> He's been, he's he probably playing. does want me though. <laughs> he probably does want to kick I want my you ass. Too, friend. <laughs> that that would be a fair that fight. Head. That's a pad. That would be a fair fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you kick my ass. Yeah, Terrence Crawford. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, but um, you know, uh, yeah. So that's the thing. The two. That's the the discerning difference between the two of them is, like I said, Terrence is directly at you. There's no question about it. Yeah. I want to fight. He's very cutthroat. And I just want to see Errol Spence with that same kind of energy. Like I, I get it. You know, he doesn't feel he gotta. He he feels that he can um, depend so. He has a sense of entitlement. Skills. Oh, skills. Oh. I, th I feel like he he feels like he 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 can depend solely on his skill as a boxer to to make fights happen that he doesn't have to or, or to, to make people interested and excited about fights but it's a business and it's entertainment that's the one thing he got to realize this is entertain this is a business of entertainment so you know this is gladiator shit this goes back to the gladiator days 
you know it was about being are you entertained this is entertainment so it's like Muhammad Ali you know where Muhammad Ali got all of his braggadociousness and, and, and his, his ability to sell those fights you know all the all the trash and he was the best trash talker ever like because he he actually had he was poignant you know what I'm saying like it wasn't just <laughs> <laughs> Giving them eye candy yeah. over it, it, it was it was it wasn't just trash talk. It wasn't just MFs and this and that. He actually had some things to say, you know, and it was entertaining. Everything, everything connected. He got that from WWF wrestlers. You know how they would sell the fights. What you gonna do, brother? On the, on, let me tell you something. On and Joe Frazier <laughs> went to his death with pounds of hurt still in his heart. For what joke for he what Muhammad Ali soul. said about it. he took his soul. He, took he literally his soul. He, he literally. took it way too personal. He did, he did, he did. But then Ali was a savage. I mean he I mean Ali in, in Vegas when they were supposed to be uh leading up to their fight, you know, Ali drove he would drive by Joe Fra Joe Frazier's uh, house out there where he was staying. And all he'd be on a bullhorn to call him all kind of gorillas, you ugly gorillas. Yeah, gorilla. You, uh, you know what I'm saying? And he threw a brick through his window. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yo, that, he was a savage, but uh -huh. yo, it was again. He was selling the fight. I think, you know, Joe Frazier took it a little too personally. I mean, he got, it's a short life here. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? If ain't, if ain't nobody threatening your life, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, it is what it is. You know, y'all got paid. What's what are you mad at? That's what I'm looking. Look, I look at all these top, all these athletes that these pro athletes. I mean, in in any across the board in any in any sport. Mm -hmm. When, when they walk around mad, they, they mad and angry. What you mad and angry about, bro? Like, you getting paid. Like, you, you, like in the fight game. I know cats can't be that mad, like when they selling tickets, you know, with a, you know, I'm gonna kick you up. Dude, this guy's getting paid. Y'all both getting each other paid. Big paydays. I mean, Floyd Mayweather's made, what, billions of dollars doing this? You know, that's a, yo, to me, and I've heard it before, it's an honor for a, a fighter to, choose a fighter to fight because they get in that personal place. You know what I'm saying? So instead of taking it personally, man, just go with the flow, man. Let's you know, bring bring what everybody wants to see, man. Give everybody what they want to see. You're an entertainer, entertain. The people has chosen us as dance partners. Mm -hmm. I said the people has chosen us as dance partners. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially when you get to that level. Ali, Frazier, uh -huh. Floyd, Pacquiao, right. Spence, Crawford, right. you know, like that's it, the fight that the people want to see. Let's you know give what? them everything. And you know what? It shows also that they really do respect you as a fighter because they know that your name with their name is going to make a lot of money. So they know, you know, yo, this dude is bad and I know we're going to get a big payday for this. You know what I'm saying? That's a huge compliment. Sure, sure, sure. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. That's, I mean, that's why you see most fighters hug after, afterwards. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, man, they made their pay. They made their money. And just like, again, coming up in the street, when you rocked it with somebody, when you had to get, you had a confrontation with someone, you, nine out of 10 times, I became friends with that person after we banged it out, you know what I'm saying? Because that person respected you, you know? Mm -hmm. And they didn't want that, they didn't want that beating again. <laughs> hey, 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 speaking of that, <laughs> hey, I gotta go. But I gotta tell this fucking story, nigga. Oh my god! Oh, okay. You already know what story I'm about your most famous story at, in college. What happened? When what you happened? made that nigga walk up the hill and apologize to every black person. Oh, <laughs> hey, hey, I let me set it up. That. Hey, let me set it up. Yeah, this nigga yeah, yeah, yeah. Farley. This yeah. nigga Farley. It, it, who was it? A, a lacrosse player or something? Yeah. It, it was a lacrosse player, right? Yeah, and yeah. he called somebody a nigga, right? He called. He called a. Uh, Black chick up there. He, he called a black girl a, a, a bitch or a nigga bitch. Black, black bitch. A black like bitch, right? Yeah, yeah. This nigga, Farley, I, I grabbed this nigga. <laughs> I swear to God, I can't make this up. I'm walking out of Turner Hall, and you made this nigga apologize to me. <laughs> you made that, you grabbed that nigga by his neck. I forgot and, all about that. And that was the funniest shit. <laughs> all, but, but that goes to show you like, how we must be each other's... Brothers, keeper, we gotta, keep her. We gotta protect our women, and we gotta protect our women. But 
But I, I, I got to tell the fans this. You made you grabbed that nigga literally by the neck and made him apologize <laughs> to every black person on campus. Yo, he lucky he didn't get them tips on him. Yeah, you know yeah. What I'm I remember that shit like it was yesterday. Yeah. I remember that shit like that was like 1999, nigga, 1998. Word. I remember that shit Word. like it was yesterday, hey, man. Hey, yo, you know I get look. I I'm mean, but I'm fit. Uh huh. I'm fit. Like I said, I didn't put no hand. I didn't put them hands on him because he was willing to make it. Right. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That shit was classic. Don't that let shit. don't let the pretty face fool you. That yeah. shit was classic, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was classic. It, anyways, the venue on YouTube. I'm putting the link in the description box. I got I got to go hit this heavy bag. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but uh, tell them about it. Tell them. Uh, refresh them. Tell them about your okay. The YouTube the channel. Okay. So yeah. Um, Number one, thank you, thank you, my man. Like, Come on, man, it's easy, it's easy, put, easy, easy. Put me on your, your, your we gonna do this me. often because yeah. we work out every morning together now, so it's pretty All the dope. Time, baby. Yeah, we getting it in. Yeah, man. so people gonna want to hear your, in, getting your that take. chicken every day. You're getting that chicken <laughs> every day, real talk. So basically, the venue, um, like I said, uh, you inspired me to go ahead and just kick it off. So uh -huh. uh, the venue is actually a platform where I'm, where I will be, um, in it, where I'll be interviewing up and coming entertainers artists and athletes that mm -hmm. have that that are brilliant at what they do but just not have not had that light shine though mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying because as an actor and artist myself that's been doing this for a lot many like 20 some years yeah you're the talent <laughs> <laughs> um for 20 something years you know i understand how it is to know that your work has made an impact sure and not really get the get the nod because there's you know there's a lot of favoritism that goes sure, into this, sure, this sure. Uh, game there's a lot of um, nepotism uh -huh. you know what I'm saying and a lot, whole lot of other things sure. you know uh, you know honestly your talent is not what breaks you it's not what gets you in it's the people you know it's the connections the relationships and once you get in your talent and your and your um, character how you treat people keeps you going. You know what I'm saying? But I I wanted to make this platform for people that didn't have. I'm telling you. But I'm, I'm kind of in. I'm kind of conflict. <laughs> uh, but not taking. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, you're right. The shaved head always gets me. Like, yeah, uh -huh. uh, it's a little much. Uh -huh. But yo. Yeah. You don't yeah. like short hair girls? You don't like girls with short hair? It depends. It depends. You okay? You want to say hello? <laughs> <laughs> it depends. Uh -huh. uh, I love short hair. You know, not everybody can rock everything. You know what I'm man, I gotta go, man. We can't be having this guy. Wrap it up, man. I gotta go. Hey, man, you you, I know, I know. You fucking up my, my, my well, heavy okay, bag so tie. Check this out. Check this out. So, we, we coming back Monday, Tuesday. We gonna come I'm back. yelling at me. All right. Okay, so, the venue is a platform for people who are in the entertainment business and that are in the athletic world sure. that either are coming up or have been there and been doing amazing work um, and, they, and they, they haven't got that nod, they haven't got that light shine though. You know, I want people, you know, I want to give that, give that to people, you know what I'm saying? I want people, number one, I feel their work uh -huh. should be recognized by people because they're making an impact. But I also want those people to get get sure. the, the deserve sure. attention. Sure. Um, and also community excellence. Mm -hmm. So I also cover community excellence. Sure. Anything that anyone is doing in the community to build relationships mm -hmm. up um, and 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 make you know make it a better place for everyone. Mm -hmm. That's another thing also that I that I um, put it. Uh, so we go on to the venue. The venue. I'm gonna put the link in the description. That's the only link I'm gonna put in the description box. Go surprise. Go okay. subscribe to Farley's channel, man. I love you. Yeah. Been down for 20 years, nigga. Down. We've been down. We Thank get the notification. We've been down for 20 years, nigga. 20 years and nigga, going been, strong, bro. Yeah, for you real. Know, you know, it's funny. Time and distance. When, 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 when you are, when you got good people in your corner. Uh huh. Time and distance doesn't matter. It's not a factor. Cause you guys pick up right where you left. Right where you left off. You're you know right, what man. I'm real talk. Love you, brother. I right, appreciate you, King. Yeah. Be well, man. Mm.